SpaceX launching and landing rockets in the U.S. is something we are already familiar with. But will Elon just leave it at that? Of course not. Recently, SpaceX and Elon Musk have expanded their plans to recover Starship in another country, marking a larger presence of Elon's company across the globe. Interested? Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for watching. All right, as we know, SpaceX has launched Starship four times from its launch site in South Texas, known as Starbase, and is planning a fifth launch within the next two months. However, as they continue to test Starship and plan for regular flights, SpaceX is going to need a higher launch cadence. This is particularly true because the company is unlikely to activate an additional launch pad for Starship in Florida until at least 2026. So to that end, SpaceX has asked the FAA to grant permission for up to 25 flights a year from South Texas, along with the ability to land both the upper stage of Starship and Super Heavy Booster back at the launch site? The answer is likely to be a yes. On July 28, the FAA signaled that they were inclined to approve this request. The federal agency released a 154-page draft tiered environmental assessment for an increased cadence of Starship launches out of South Texas. In conclusion, the document stated, the FAA has concluded that the modifications of SpaceX's existing vehicle operator license for Starship Super Heavy operations confirms that the prior environmental documentation is consistent with the data contained in the 2022 PEA, that there are no significant environmental changes and all pertinent conditions and requirements of the prior approval have been met or will be met in the current action. All right, so what does that mean? This means that the FAA has found their extensive 2022 analysis of Starship operations on stuff like the environment, wildlife, local communities, etc., sufficient to account for the modifications that SpaceX is proposing. However, this alone is not enough to make a definitive decision for SpaceX, as this is only milestone number three in this seven-part process leading to the final outcome. Next up is a series of public meetings, both in person in South Texas and online throughout August. Then public comment will conclude on August 29th. So, in addition to increasing the number of launches at Starbase from the FAA document, we can also recognize another highlight, the landing zones of Starship. So, if you're a SpaceX fan, you probably know the familiar locations where SpaceX lands and recovers their rockets. You got the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii, as mentioned during Starship's second flight. However, the location near Hawaii's coast may no longer be feasible for Starship flights. Therefore, besides the Gulf of Mexico, new landing areas have been planned in the Pacific, specifically in the northeastern Pacific, near the coast of California and southeastern Pacific off the west coast of South America. All these locations are under U.S. jurisdiction, so when SpaceX lands there, they'll be free to get all their vehicles. But that's not all. Another proposed location is in the Indian Ocean, stretching from the east of Madagascar to the west coast of Australia. This is where Starship, during its fourth launch, made a controlled landing in the Indian Ocean, hundreds of miles off the northwestern coast of Australia. Thus, we can see that this location is a potential landing site for many future test flights of Starship. It will help SpaceX increase the success rate of flights compared to the previous chosen location for Starship's second flight in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii's coast. Now, it's still unclear what specific plan SpaceX has for rocket recovery at this site, but in the long term, the idea of Starship making a controlled landing on an unmanned ship and then towing the vehicle back to land, similar to current Falcon 9 operations, is undeniable. Of course, this would likely be the procedure for the Starship ship's second stage, while Super Heavy's booster would still have its landing site in the Gulf of Mexico. However, recovering rockets on Australian territory would require their permission, and to be allowed to do that, the U.S. would need to relax export controls on sophisticated space tech out of Australia. Fortunately, the administration of President Joe Biden has previously sought to ease similar restrictions with the AUKUS Security Alliance, a group comprising the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. aimed at countering China. This plan is part of a broader U.S. strategy to support Australia, its close ally in countering China's growing influence in the region. An agreement with SpaceX would help Australia bolster its space defense program, enhance military and civil cooperation in space with the U.S., and develop its own domestic space industry. However, bringing a recovered Starship booster onto foreign soil still faces lots of legal problems. SpaceX leaders, along with U.S. and Australian officials, are working to resolve all that. After all, SpaceX, Space Force, and the Australian Space Agency have not yet given an official answer. As negotiations continue, the timing of a Starship landing off Australia's coast has not yet been set.
We shouldn't worry too much about this. Based on the benefits and partnerships between the two countries, the outcome leans much closer to positive than negative. If successful, this test landing would be seen as the first step in SpaceX's long-term strategy in Australia. In the future, the company could expand operations, including launching spacecraft from a land-based facility or landing Starship boosters directly on the ground. However, all this is still in the early stages. This cautious approach is not new to SpaceX. When developing the partially reusable Falcon 9 rocket a decade ago, the company also conducted test landings at sea before moving to land-based and drone ship landings. Today, Falcon 9 has become SpaceX's workhorse, with the first stage booster completing hundreds of successful landings from space. This experience will undoubtedly be applied to the Starship project in Australia, promising to open a new chapter in space exploration and international cooperation. It is impressive to see SpaceX's ability to progress, never retreating, only advancing and expanding. That's the company's motto. Leave us a heart in the comments if you also think SpaceX is amazing. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. All right, getting back into it. As SpaceX targets significant goals like increasing the number of launches while expanding its footprint to new territories, the company is also building more powerful variants of its rockets, with the launch of these vehicles also being permitted. SpaceX has announced some impressive upgrades for its rockets. In the 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, Starship was described as a vehicle 50 meters tall, 9 meters in diameter, with six engines, capable of carrying 1,500 tons of fuel and generating 12 mn of thrust. On the other hand, Super Heavy stands 71 meters tall, also a 9 meter diameter, 37 engines, 3,700 tons of fuel, generating a formidable 74 mn of thrust. Currently, SpaceX is taking everything to a new level. The new Starship spacecraft will be up to 70 meters tall, maintaining that 9 meter diameter, but increasing the number of engines to a total of 9. It'll carry 2,650 tons of fuel and generate a powerful 28.7 mn of thrust. Super Heavy will also undergo improvements, extending to 80 meters in height while maintaining the 9 meter diameter. It'll be equipped with 35 engines capable of carrying 4,100 tons of fuel and generating an impressive 103 mn of thrust. With these upgrades, the combined height of Starship and Super Heavy will reach 150 meters. The company is considering a much greater thrust for each vehicle, effectively doubling Starship's thrust. A larger, more powerful launch system will require more than 1,500 tons of liquid oxygen and methane repellent. These advancements represent a significant increase in performance, closely aligning with the specs outlined in the FAA's Environmental Impact Statement for Future Operations. One change that could help sell this increase in flight frequency is that SpaceX is not seeking any increase in the closure of State Highway 4, which runs from Brownsville to Boca Chica Beach. This road passes right by the launch site and is closed during launches and static fire tests. SpaceX has moved much of the pre-launch testing to a new nearby site that doesn't require road closings. Well, that new testing site is Massey. This is the location SpaceX acquired in 2022. The site is approximately 15 minutes away from the launch site along the same Highway 4 road. SpaceX bought this land because it gives a large enough area to test prototypes away from the launch site, ensuring that operations are not affected. Since then, starting with Ship 25, the first Starship prototypes have continuously undergone testing at this location. One of the main areas of this site is the cryogenic and structural testing area, where Starship's second stage and super heavy booster prototypes are tested for their ability to withstand extremely low temperatures and pressures. The cryogenic testing stands are connected to Massey's tank farm, which supplies liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen needed for these tests. The structural test cage is another facility used to verify the strength and durability of the new sections of the ships and boosters. However, this cage appears to have been partially disassembled as of February. The story wouldn't be particularly noteworthy if Massey stopped there. SpaceX soon realized the need to ramp up testing for future prototypes and to avoid getting restricted by public regulations. Therefore, they expanded the site to include engine testing, and this area will now replace the current function of the suborbital launch site, making way for a second Starship launch tower at the main launch site. The area now features a new methane tank farm that includes at least one vertical CH4 tank and two subcores. There is also a water deluge tank farm and three large horizontal tanks and what's believed to be an enclosed flare system. The tank farm is integrated with the existing pipeline systems to supply fuel to the engines. The engine testing area also includes a flame trench, a large pit that directs engine exhaust away from the test stand. In addition, 
to the flame trench, there's also a stand for the ship to sit on, allowing it to roll on and off the trench without needing a crane to lift the ship. This setup has proven extremely efficient, as evidenced by the static fire test of Ship 30. It not only meets SpaceX's need for testing at any time, but also gives us a fascinating view of how these engines ignite and how impressive they look. And soon, we might see a new version of the engine, the Raptor 3, which SpaceX and Elon just announced coming in for testing. It's exciting to anticipate seeing this beast light up. Overall, SpaceX continues to move forward with all the right steps. They're expanding to improve and even accelerate their timeline toward the ambitious goal of reaching Mars, as Elon often tells us about. The future is still ahead of us, and we can't wait to see what amazing milestones they achieve next. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.